Hello everyone, welcome back to Loop TV Talk, going over some of the most recent TV episodes I've been watching. And for this episode I'll be looking at the new Star Wars series, Tales of the Jedi, episodes 1 through 6. But before I get into that, I uploaded a review for episodes 7 and 8 of Andor, so if you're interested, go give them a watch. And make sure to like, subscribe to keep up to date with all future episodes. Okay, so let's get into episode 1 of Tales of the Jedi. We see Ahsoka's village, and see her birth. A baby Ahsoka and her mother go for her first hunt. So there seems to be a little ritual in the village where, at a young age, the parent takes the child out to hunt so they can get an understanding of the life that surrounds them. Her mother shows her to respect life and death. So she tells Ahsoka, don't look away, it's just a natural part of the cycle of life and you shouldn't be scared or worried. While hunting, though, they are ambushed by a saber-toothed cat. And basically Ahsoka's mother has to fight it off while also trying to protect her baby Ahsoka. In the ensuing fight, the big cat kidnaps Ahsoka. While with the cat, Ahsoka unintentionally uses her force abilities to calm the creature. So she touches its nose and it calms the cat down. And they become almost like friends, even if like, Ahsoka doesn't realise what she's doing. Ahsoka rides the saber tooth back to the village and it all ends happily. This is a cool first episode. We get to meet Ahsoka when she was a baby and get to understand how she first encountered the ways of the force. So it was great seeing Ahsoka's origin and her people because... In the Clone Wars series, I don't think we ever looked at Ahsoka's like background uh, in this much depth. We get a cool creature to design with the saber tooth. We get a lovely, uh, was it black and yellow pattern? I'm loving the animation. It's the Clone Wars animation, but top notch. It's like the best it's ever been at this point. Uh, baby Ahsoka is just adorable. She's making those typical baby sounds. It's just so such a sweet thing. Uh, the connection between the saber tooth and Ahsoka was heartwarming. So the Sabretooth was really angry and scared, but Ahsoka calmed it down and they became relaxed with each other. And the length of the episode was just right, I think, for the story it was trying to tell. I think it did a good job of trying to convey what it meant. Okay, so we're on to episode two. Dooku and his young Padawan, Qui-Gon Jinn, visit a devastated planet and village. They are looking for a kidnapped senator's son, and it's revealed the villagers took him to force the senator to be better. We find out that the senator used to be good, but then started only doing things for himself and for greed, and basically left the village to rot. Dooku visits the son, who understands the people and their reasons for kidnapping him. He almost kind of agrees with what they did and understands why they did it. The villagers are confronted by the senator and his guards. Dooku sides with the villagers and ends up fighting the soldiers and almost kills the senator, but Qui-Gon stops him before he can go any further. Dooku and the senator leave, with the issue resolved. So we get to see the starting of Dooku trying to understand why are we helping these senators when they're just corrupt people out for themselves when we're meant to be helping the people of the republic and not lapdogs of the senate and looking after rich people it's great seeing a young dooku and qui-gon because we never really saw that ever we only saw qui-gon in episode one and then it, he obviously died in that and then we pretty much had him only after that so it's good to see a young him the village is in terrible condition and you can understand why the villagers might have to resort to kidnapping the Senate's son because it's like their last option. They've got nothing left. I respect the son and I hate the power-hungry Senator father because the son understands like, this is our planet. Why are we not looking after our people? And the Senator's like, uh, this is my planet. I will do what I want with it. And he's just an evil, power-hungry politician, basically. And I can see why Dooku would turn if this is what he is meant to protect. So basically, he's the one that's meant to protect the Senator's but they're just power hungry and horrible people and why would he want to protect those people and not protect the public who are like downtrodden and not looked after? I can see why he would move away from the Jedi. Okay, then to episode 3. Mace Windu and Dooku investigate the death of another Jedi. Mace wants to follow protocol, but Dooku wants the truth. They go to the scene of the crime, but there are inconsistencies in the Senator's story. Suddenly, the guards kill the senator and attack Mason Dooku. It's revealed the senator was corrupt, and the guards were blackmailing him to improve things on the planet. On their return, Mace is promoted to the council for following protocol, while Dooku isn't, even though he tried to do the right thing. So, we're starting to see even more glimpses of why Dooku turned away from the Jedi Council. Like, he was trying to do the right thing, and protect these people, and get rid of the corruption, but then Mace, who would have allowed it to happen, was promoted instead. So I can understand why he would move away from that, because they're just power-hungry people that are trying to keep the same formula. Mace and Dooku are almost complete opposites, with Mace being 
stick to the books and Dooku being the one that's like, go out of your way to help people, even if it's against the rules. We get more corruption in the Senate, which Dooku hates and makes you understand even more why he turns away from it. The other Jedi got caught in the fire, so I think it was, I can't remember their name, but the, the Jedi they went to go find the body of and collect just caught got caught up in the issues with the local populace. And as I said, Mace is rewarded while Dooku isn't, even though he found and removed a corrupt official. So Dooku is being pushed away by the council, basically. Okay, and on to episode four. It takes place during the Phantom Menace when Dooku removes Kamino from the Jedi archives. Qui-Gon informs Dooku of his clash with Maul on Tatooine. Dooku warns him not to take the Sith lightly. After Qui-Gon's death, Yaddle suspects Dooku and follows him. Dooku meets with Palpatine and ends up fighting and killing Yaddle, cementing him as the new Sith apprentice. So, at this point, Dooku's been th through so much, seeing the corruption of the Senate, the Jedi being pawns of that Senate, and he's now being pushed towards Palpatine because he thinks Palpatine is the way to help people and not the Senate. You can see why Dooku switched sides and you better understand his eventual downfall so you understand how he gets pulled in by Palpatine because Palpatine shows him that he can help him while the Jedi can't. It's great to see such characters that for Yaddle because you see Yaddle in episode 1, Phantom Menace, but you don't see him after that and this shows why. Uh, the music for Dooku's episodes were great all round and this episode was the culmination of that awesome soundtrack. And then we get a cool fight between Yaddle and Dooku. I think it's on par with... Clone Wars, Yoda vs. Dooku, but with its animation, it might be that bit better. Okay, and on, on to episode 5. To better prepare Ahsoka, Anakin puts her through tougher training against the clones and not just droid units. Ahsoka gets stunned multiple times, and each time she awakens, Anakin says to go again. Ahsoka gets better, and then it flashes to just before Order 66, with her doing the same training, but now more intensely as she's become better at it. And then it cuts to Ahsoka and Rex escape 66. So this was basically showing Anakin giving Ahsoka the most amount of training he can so she can protect herself in the future. And then it's basically right into Order 66 where she's going to have to fight the clones. So you understand why Anakin thinks this training is necessary because droids are predictable but people you can never really know what they're going to do. So you can understand why he's teaching her these things. And then Ahsoka's development rate she's incredibly skilled and you see her Start off, she can't really do anything against the clones fire, but as it flashes forward, you see she can compete with them, and she's gotten a lot better. And unfortunately, I think this is the weakest episode, because you don't really get much new story or new development. It's basically just her training, which we knew she did, so it's kind of just repeating of what we've already kind of known before. And then finally, episode 6. After visiting Padme's funeral, Ahsoka goes on the run and becomes a farmer. Bail Organa gives her a device should she ever need to contact him. While farming, Ahsoka uses the Force to save someone, but reveals herself to the people. While away selling the harvest they've made, one of the villagers contacts the Empire about Ahsoka to try and turn her in, but the Empire destroy the village, looking for her killing many of the residents. On her return, Ahsoka comes face to face with an Inquisitor and ends up killing him quite quickly. The surviving villagers leave on Bale's ship, and Ahsoka seems to be ready to return to the fight. So this was a cool little look into what Ahsoka was doing between Order 66 and when we see her in like Rebels and Mandalorian where she's full on in the in the fight with the Rebels. So we understand why Ahsoka would go into hiding. She doesn't want anything to do with any of the, the Sith, the Jedi, the Empire. She just wants to be left alone. Ahsoka can't help but help others in need and that's what gets her caught because she's trying to help people but there's always going to be someone that wants to turn her I have no idea why the villager expected the Empire to be nice. I think a lot of people are deluded, thinking the Empire is going to look after them and treat them well and reward them. But no, the Empire will treat everyone like rubbish. I love the Inquisitor design. I love the mask. I love the cape. It looks so menacing and cool. And then I love her resolve to return to the fight. So Ahsoka knows she needs to come back and fight because if she won't, a lot of people are going to suffer. And then the only kind of bummer about this episode was that the Inquisitor died way too easily for how cool menacing he looked he looked really cool and like he might put up a good fight but he put in a few swings and then Ahsoka just ruined him which was kind of a bummer but yeah I love six short episodes we get a cool little backstory of Dooku and some more story on Ahsoka and it was cool to see them pad out their 
stories and lives because we don't know a lot about Dooku apart from later in life. But yeah, if you love the Clone Wars series, if you love Star Wars in general, these are going to be a must for you to see and I recommend it completely. But yeah, that's my thoughts on these episodes. If you like this video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and subscribe to the episodes. And until next time, I will see you all later.